everybody. Welcome to another week of virtual children's conversation or Sunday school or whatever you want to call it <laughs> at this point. Um, today is Sunday, December 3rd, 13th, 13th, or it will be when you see this video. I'm recording it early. Um, this is the third Sunday of Advent, and as we've been talking about this month, um, each Sunday in Advent, which is the part of the calendar year leading up to Christmas, um, each Sunday of Advent has a different spiritual gift as its theme. And this week the theme is joy. So I always, I like this one because who doesn't want to feel joyful, right? Um, so if you remember, we light candles for each Sunday and we sing a little song and it just goes, I'll just say hope because hope's the first one. We light one candle for hope, one bright candle for hope. Christ brings hope to every heart. He comes, he comes. And then we repeat it for each one. So we've got hope, peace, and joy. Yes, hope, peace, and joy. All right. So let's go ahead and, and sing our little song. Light one candle for hope, one bright candle for hope. Christ brings hope to every heart. He comes, he comes. Peace. Light one candle for peace. One bright candle for peace. Christ brings peace to every heart. He comes, he comes. Joy. Light one candle for joy. One bright candle for joy. Christ brings joy to every heart. He comes, he comes. Thank you for doing that with me. I'm gonna just move this off to the side. You can still see one of those candles, I guess, a little bit as we talk about our Sunday school lesson for today. So today's theme is Jesus is coming. If you remember last week, I said I'm kind of excited because I can actually go through our official Christmas curriculum since I don't have to worry about using up this time to prepare for their Christmas pageant. So today's theme is Jesus is coming. If you remember last week we talked about the stories of Mary and of Joseph who were both visited by angels and told that Jesus was going to be coming. Mary was told that she was pregnant and that she was going to have Jesus and Joseph was told that Mary was pregnant and that he should name the baby Jesus. Um, now we're going to learn a little bit more about their story. I'm going to read to you from the Bible, not our normal storybook, just the Bible. And this comes from Luke chapter um, 2, verses 1 through 5. So, actually, I had the wrong Bible. I like the version in this one better. So, this is in Luke, right? What testament is Luke in? Well, it's a normal sounding name, which is your first clue. And then you also know that we're going to be talking about Jesus' birth, which is your second clue. Anything that's about Jesus' birth and later is going to be in the New Testament. And so Luke is the fourth gospel right here. And this is chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be enrolled. This is like, and that means like a census. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be enrolled, each to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And that's it. That's all we got. So um, a lot of you know the story where Mary and Joseph traveled from where they lived, which was Nazareth, up to Bethlehem. And this is why, this is telling you why they did that. At the time, the, um, the government at the time decided to take a census. Now today, when we do a census, we have like little cards that we fill out and we mail it in, but they didn't have that then. So they all had to actually physically go to the place where they were born and then that's where they would go and then they would be counted in the city which is seems really complicated right if i had to go back to where i was born i'd go back to south dakota <laughs> or i guess because i'm married i would go to my husband's place of birth so i'd have to go back to pennsylvania from california to be counted and 
I'm glad we didn't have to do that this year for the census. <laughs> um, so, have you guys ever, so this was a really long trip that they had to take, right? Like I was talking about, we have to go from all the way from California to Pennsylvania. That's a long trip. They went from Nazareth, which is a city in the Middle East, to Bethlehem, which is another city in the Middle East. And I actually did a little bit of Googling to figure out how far this would be. This was about 90 miles. Now, today, 90 miles, we don't think of as being that far. It's only about an hour and a half. So, um, you know, driving up to Tahoe City or so from here is probably roughly that, maybe a little bit less. Um, but it's really not, it's not that far um, for us. But that's because we can drive cars, right? And we can go pretty fast in cars. Um, it takes 90 minutes to go 90 miles if you're driving 60 miles an hour. And the speed limit on our interstate is 65, so you can get there in less than 90 minutes, which is an hour and a half. It's not that long. But back then, Mary and Joseph would have probably had to walk it. I know a lot of the pictures that we see have Mary riding on a donkey, but there isn't anything in the Bible that actually says she was riding on a donkey. I think that we just sort of put her on a donkey now to feel better because she was pregnant. <laughs> and that's a long ways to walk when you're pregnant. Um, but she probably did just walk that distance, right? And so I, again, Google was my friend. I looked this up. According to Google, it takes about 33 hours to walk from Nazareth to Galilee. Now a day is 24 hours. So that's almost a day and a half straight of walking. And you're not gonna be able to walk for 33 hours straight. So they would have to stop and camp or stay at somebody's house as they were doing this. So who knows how long it actually took them. And again, Mary's pregnant. So she's probably walking a lot slower than most people would be able to, especially depending on how pregnant she is. We don't really know. Um, I know the way our Christmas pageant says, she always like, she goes there and boom, she gives birth, but it probably took a lot longer than that. So, um, but I mean, that's, that's a long journey that they would have had to take. And, um, that's, I don't know. I was trying to think about joy since this is our week for joy too. And it's just like, how would you find joy in a journey like that? Um, I know this is a video for kids, so most of you haven't been pregnant, um, but I have, and so I can share my experience with you a little bit. It's uncomfortable to be pregnant. Um, not always. It's, it can be a very joyful thing that you have this life growing inside of you, but it can also be a little bit uncomfortable. And walking especially can bring out the discomfort more and more. So when I think, the more I think about Mary, making this 90 mile trek while pregnant, the more I just, I feel bad for her. This had to, this was hard. So how do you guys find joy when you're doing something hard? Do you ever think about that? Do you ever find joy when you're doing something hard? Um, I think back to last year on New Year's Eve, we were snowshoeing as a family and um, we were just sort of exploring um, Yosemite as a, as a family on New Year's Eve. And we got, we were already quite a ways in. Gabe was just five years old and he was getting tired, right? Um, which is understandable because we've been snowshoeing for a long time and snowshoeing can be hard because you're, you're carrying a lot of extra weight. So we get to this last hill and it's, it's a big hill and it's really steep. And Sean and Caden had already started going up the hill and I looked at that and I was just like, I don't think Gabe's gonna be able to make it. And Gabe looked at that and just threw himself down in the snow and said, I can't do it. And he was so tired and so exhausted. And um, we had promised him hot chocolate if he finished the hike with us. And he, then he started getting upset because he wasn't going to get his hot chocolate. And I said, Gabe, I'm still going to give you hot chocolate. You've done so well. Let's just turn around and go back. And he goes, no, I want to finish. And I'll tell you what, <laughs> it was 
<laughs> he did. He finished that height. He was exhausted. But he got to the top of that hill. And I have never seen a more joyful person than when he was at the top of that hill. The view was spectacular. We took cool pictures. We found a cool s hill that we could like sort of sled down on our butts. And it was amazing. But he did something so hard for him. And through that, that sense of accomplishment that he got when he finished it, that was like pure joy right there. So. I hope that Mary and Joseph were able to slow down and find some sense of accomplishment as they were going on this journey and and find joy as they were going on the journey because that would be a really hard thing to do without being able to to find some sort of joy so as you guys go through your weeks I know we're all sort of ramping up to Christmas now. You probably have Christmas decorations up. You probably have your tree up. If you don't, it's okay. Um, and I know for those of you who are in school, you might be working hard to get some final exams in or in stuff like that. And it can be a really stressful time of year, but I really encourage you guys to just try to slow down and um, try to find joy in the moment if you can, because it's so important to be able to do that. And with all of the emphasis that we put on all of the events surrounding Christmas and everything, it can get really stressful and we can lose sight of what it's really about, which is really to slow down and focus on the joy of the simple things. So with that, let's go ahead and close in prayer. Dear God, thank you for giving us places to find joy in this world. Thank you for our families, for this beautiful part of the world that we live in, and for our community that continues to support us even in these difficult times. Please be with us today and throughout this week as we go about our lives preparing for Christmas, finishing up school before the winter break, and help us to slow down a little so that we may recognize and appreciate those things that bring us joy this time of year. In your name we pray, amen. All right, bye everybody. Have a wonderful week and I will see you next week.